So you could have like 10 labels and five UI image views and buttons and sliders and whatever, or you could just have a view like this where it just has a single image view and just does one thing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom UI view and a custom UI control by implementing a checkbox component. There are a few different ways of setting up a custom UI view. You can lay out all of the UI in a storyboard or in a nib file, or you can do everything programmatically. And in this video, I'm just gonna focus on doing it programmatically. So I've created a blank single view application. And what I wanna do is add a checkbox component then I'm gonna put on the main view controller and when I tap the checkbox, it's gonna be checked and when I tap it again, it will be unchecked, kind of like every checkbox. So to create a new UI view programmatically, first we create a new file and I'm gonna select from the Cocoa Touch class and then I'm gonna make this a subclass of UI view because it's just gonna be a plain old UI view. Uh, and I'm gonna call this checkbox. And immediately this class is created with this function that we don't need for this example. So I'm just gonna delete it. And now checkbox is just a plain UI view. It's gonna be a box with a background color. In order to actually show a checkbox, I'm gonna add an image view to this view. So I've created a property that is a type of UI image view. And when this view is initialized, I wanna create a new instance of the image view and add it as a subview to my checkbox. So in order to do this, I have to override the uh, init with frame initializer and then call super init with frame. And then what I'll do when this initializer is called is I can set up the image view, add it as a subview and set up auto layout constraints. Uh, but before I do that, I'm getting a warning here and that's because I need to implement another initializer and this is init with coda. So this initializer right here, init with frame, will get called when I create the new checkbox from code. But if I drag a new UI view into the storyboard and say it's a checkbox, then this initializer will get called. So there's two different initializers that may get called depending on how the checkbox gets created. So I'll call super init with coda here. And then I basically have to run the same setup code for each initializer. So I'm gonna create a new function called setup. And I'll just call this from both initializers. And then in this setup function, here's where I'll do everything like set up the image view, add it as a sub view, do the auto layout constraints and everything else. And this right here, this kind of setup, is basically the boilerplate code for any custom UI view that you create. So now I'm just gonna set up the image view. So I'm creating a brand new image view, adding it as a sub view to this checkbox view, and then constraining it to the edges because it's gonna take up the entire view. Uh, then I'm just setting it to be the system image, this checkmark image, setting the content mode, uh, and then actually assigning it to this property. So the property here is a weak variable because when we add this image view as a subview right here, it's going to get a strong reference there. And I don't wanna to create two strong references to this view. So usually we create a weak reference to any view that we're adding as a subview. I'm also setting the background color to be clear so that we only see the image and we don't see a white box behind it. Right now, this should be enough code to actually get it working as a view that just shows a check mark. So I'm gonna go over to the storyboard and I'm gonna add in a new UI view. And I think I'm just gonna put this in the middle of the view and I'll just add some constraints for that. Okay, so I've got the view constrained. It's just in the middle and it's 100 points wide, 100 points height. Now, if we go over to this identity inspector, we can see that the type of this view is a UI view, but we can change this to be any type of UI view, including the new checkbox that I just created. So now instead of being a UI view, this is actually a checkbox and we can't see a difference on the storyboard. But now if I run this application in the simulator,
I can see the checkbox appears right in the middle of the screen. So this is working perfectly. This is my custom view. It appears as a checkbox. But it would also be really nice if I could see that in the storyboard. And we can do that in Xcode. If we add at I be designable right before the class, then when we add it to the storyboard, it will render everything and present us with what it should look like when it's running the simulator. So this is just taking a moment to process it, and now we can see that's what it's going to look like. So now every time I add a view that is a checkbox, it will actually show me what it's going to look like. Now this checkbox needs to be configurable. Right now it's in its checked state, but I also need an unchecked state when the checkmark doesn't appear in the box. It's just going to be a box. So to make that happen, I want to have a property on my view called checked that is a boolean uh, that maybe defaults to false. So by default, it's just going to be unchecked, and then we can check it if we want to. Uh, and I'm also going to make this public because I want it to be very obvious how this checkbox should be used. So anyone using my checkbox should ignore things like the image view and the setup function but they should just focus on this checked property. So if they set this checked property, that will change how the view appears and that will be the state of this view. Um, and by setting it to public, that means that I could put this into its own package and then use it from other Swift packages. So now based on if this is true or false, I'll change the image that we see in the image view. And to do that, I'm gonna create a computed property that I'm just gonna call image. It's gonna be a type of UI image. And I'll just return either an empty square or the checkbox square, depending on if checked is true or false. Now there's this image property that will return either the filled in check mark or just an empty square, depending on if checked is true or false. And then down here, I can just use the image property like that. And I'm also going to add a bit of code here that will check when this property, the checked property, changes. So when this is set to a new value, we're just going to set the image view's image to be that image. So every time this changes, we'll just reset what the image is, which will reset what's seen. Uh, so now I can change this checked property, and that will change whether we see a check mark or just an empty box. But right now, this can only be accessed from code. So I'd have to create an IB outlet to this checkbox and then set its checked property manually. And we can see by default it's changed now. It's just an empty square. Uh, but I would love this to be configurable from Interface Builder. I want to be able to come in here and set whether it's checked or unchecked. And we can do this. It's really easy. If I just add before the checked property at IB inspectable, I'll now be able to access and change this property straight from Interface Builder. So now if I come back into Interface Builder, I can see checkbox checked right at the top here. Uh, right now it's just its default value, which happens to be off or false. Uh, if I change this to on, then it's that checkbox. If I change this back to off, it's that square. So I'm going to create uh, another checkbox. I'm just going to put this to the right. And now the one in the middle, I'm going to leave unchecked. The one on the right, I'm going to leave checked. And I'm going to run this again, and we can see that everything's just working. Just make sure it's working on the device, and there we go. I have an unchecked checkbox, and I have my checked checkbox. And this is a great custom UI view. And if I go back to the code here, this is a pretty simple custom view. It just has a single image view that's either a checked image or an unchecked image. But these can be as complex or as simple as you want them to be. So you could have like 10 labels and 5 UI image views and buttons and sliders and whatever. Or you could just have a view like this where it just has a single image view and just does one thing. But you can create these custom UI views that will help you implement custom components much more easily and they can be reused in different projects if you need them to be. Now this checkbox right now is just a static UI view. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't really respond to my user input in any way. And that's not the desired behavior. I want this to act more like a button or a switch where when I tap it, something happens. So the easiest way to get that kind of behavior that we get from a button or a switch is to make this a UI control instead of a UI view. And remember, a UI control is just a subclass of a UI view. So it's still a UI view, but it now has extra UI control features. And if we look back in the storyboard, if I select just a normal UI view and head over to this inspector on the right, the, uh, the connections inspector, 
I can alter gesture recognizers and referencing outlets, but because I changed this checkbox to be a UI control, I now get all of those events that we get on switches and buttons and other controls. So I now get to treat this like a normal control, which means that I can connect actions from this to something like my view controller. And the action that I want to connect to my view controller is this value changed action. Every time the value changes from checked to unchecked or unchecked to checked, I want it to notify my view controller using an ID action. But before I implement that in the view controller, I need to define that behavior within the checkbox itself. Being a control, it already knows how to listen for all of those normal touch events, so touch down, touch up inside, but it doesn't know what it means to have a value changed. So what I'm going to do is implement the touch up inside event, and when that gets triggered, I'm gonna to toggle the value of the checked variable, and then I'm basically just gonna emit the value changed event so that the view controller or any other object can listen for an IB action on value changed. So I've added a target for the touch up inside event and I'm just toggling the state of checked every time it gets tapped. It's just listening for this internally and then updating its own state. So now if I tap one of these check boxes, it changes from checked to unchecked and vice versa. Now I just need to tell the other pieces of code that the value has changed. And I can do this by calling send actions for, so I'm gonna pass in the value changed event. Now anything can listen for that value changed action and they'll get notified every time the value changes. So back in my storyboard, I'm gonna open up the assistant editor and I'm gonna drag from the middle checkbox to my view controller and I'm gonna create a brand new action it's already set to be value changed and that's what I want. I want to know when the value changes. I'm going to call this uh, check changed and I'm going to make the type uh, checkbox just so I can access the checked value directly. So in here now I can print uh, checked, wait and no, I'm going to say checkbox. All right, so that's what it looks like. It's just printing out whether it's checked or not. So now we get this, and if I click, just bring this up. So it went from unchecked to checked, and now to unchecked, then checked, then unchecked, checked. So that works exactly the way I'd expect a checkbox to work. That's a brief introduction into how custom UI views and custom controls work. And you could now take this control and use it in any application where you need a checkbox behavior. As always, leave a comment if you have any questions and stay tuned for more videos on iOS development.